With China and India gridlocked over their border disputes, a peaceful resolution isn't in sight. In fact, both nations are bolstering their military presence, which can easily spill over into an all-out war. If these nuclear superpowers clash, the military strength of both nations will decide the extent of the conflict. So which nation has a stronger army, China or India? We'll compare the two countries side by side, starting with India. India's military strength can be determined based on many metrics, but its land forces are one of the most significant elements. Experiencing constant population growth since 1971, India has also raised a number of active duty soldiers. As of today, India has approximately 1.4 million active personnel and 300,000 reserve fighters. If needed, the country can enlist additional troops from a pool of nearly 320 million people available for military service. India has the edge over most other nations in terms of sheer numbers, but it also has a high-quality training program. The country is known for its proficiency in mountain warfare, even having a dedicated high-altitude warfare school, or HAAS, a premier training center that prepares troops for some of the harshest battle environments. The ability of Indian soldiers to protect their homeland at high altitudes has been demonstrated several times throughout history. The most famous example is the battle for the Siachen Glacier, which sits at over 15,000 feet above sea level. This is the highest battlefield on the planet and is characterized by freezing conditions where most people die from the cold rather than gunfire. The unforgiving winter didn't stop Indian troops from prevailing over their opponents in the Siachen conflict, which saw India wage war against Pakistan for a 1,000 square mile territory. The intermittent clashes lasted for nearly 20 years and ended in a resounding victory for India that proved the courage and readiness of its soldiers. Having reliable fighters is essential. Most of the potential war against China will take place throughout the Chinese-Indian border, not just glaciers and other hard-to-reach areas. If India is to stand a chance against China, it needs more than just experienced soldiers. They need an artillery force to match. That's exactly what India has, thanks to its $70 billion military budget. On top of this, the country buys and develops tanks, missile systems, infantry combat vehicles, and other equipment that cements its place as a formidable military power. Let's break down India's military equipment by numbers. Currently, the country has approximately 4,600 tanks, 8,600 armored fighting vehicles, and 2,799 artillery units. But what's under the hood of those war machines? Is the technology modern or outdated? As it turns out, India's military equipment is pretty sophisticated. Take the T-90 tanks as an example. Developed and imported from Russia, the T-90 is one of the mightiest battle machines in India's arsenal. The tank's 125mm smoothbore main gun provides tremendous firepower and can fire high-explosive frag ammunition, reflex anti-tank missiles, and armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sabo rounds. Not only that, but Indian soldiers can replace the tank gun without disassembling the inner turret. This lets them return the tank to action faster and more safely if its main gun is damaged. To complement a high-quality fleet of tanks, India has a reliable system of infantry fighting vehicles. Out of the 8,600 vehicles of the sort, the BMP-2 stands out. With a design similar to its predecessor, the BMP-2 is a serviceable and agile vehicle with a robust engine that's perfect for most missions. It also has reinforced armor, especially in the front, which is typically the most vulnerable part of this type of vehicle. The BMP-2 and most other Indian infantry combat vehicles have exceptional armament. Fitted with a two-man turret, it can take on groups of opponents with relative ease. The vehicle comes with a dual-fed 30mm cannon and a 73mm low-velocity gun. The cannon is especially impressive as it fires armor-piercing high-T and HE frag ammunition. It can obliterate armored targets from one and a half miles away and ground targets from nearly three miles away. India's land troops sound reliable. But what about the country's air defenses? There are several strong points in the country's aviation forces, including 170 fighter aircraft. Most of India's aircraft, like the French Dassault Rafale, are characterized by versatility and interoperability. This means that the jets can easily conduct different kinds of missions and collaborate with allied aircraft. They also come with advanced communication systems to coordinate their assaults with other pilots for maximum efficiency. Another great thing about Indian fighter jets is that they can take on different roles. For example, a pilot can instantly switch the purpose of their plane from strike force to protective missions. Other uses of India's aircraft include reversibility, which is canceling tasks at the very last second, and gathering intelligence. 
Not only that, but India's combat aircraft also has high survivability and the capacity to engage targets in different environments. That's because the jets feature high-efficiency weapon systems and defense measures to keep the enemy from taking them down easily. For instance, if Indian pilots need to defend a base or a strategic area from Chinese planes, they can do so with EM and MICA IR air-to-air -air missiles. Likewise, they can perform ultra-effective precision ground assaults with built-in AASM hammer air-to-surface and scalp EG cruise missiles. Finally, if the goal is to intercept and destroy enemy ships, AM-39 Exocet sea skimming missiles can be the difference maker. If some of the battles in the prospective war against China take place in congested, isolated areas that fighter jets can't access without a runway, India has more than 700 helicopters to deploy. Some of them are utility helicopters designed to transport troops and perform various logistics operations, but others are combat helicopters that can shower the enemy with gunfire and missiles. That's precisely what the MIL Mi-24 does. Imported from Russia, the helicopter is a reliable addition to India's air forces. It has a revamped wing design to maintain the vertical motion of the rotor by about 30% at high speeds, and can also hold suspended weapons. It's also equipped with a three-wheel landing gear, double-tiered front leg, and two engines that generate more than 4,000 horsepower combined. As such, the Mi-24 can reach and land in distant areas rapidly and safely. In terms of weaponry, the Mi-24 and many other helicopters in the Indian fleet have revolving turrets with rotating 12.7mm machine guns that can hold well over 1,400 rounds. These are perfect for taking down groups of enemy soldiers in quick succession. India's helicopters also often have four blocks that can hold S-5 missiles, four bombs, and many napalm containers. They can even store air-to-ground rockets and anti-tank guided missiles for extra firepower. All of this translates to a powerful force which would definitely carry a heavy burden in the potential war against China. Another branch that would prove invaluable in a war against China is India's naval forces. The ongoing economic development and greater military spending have contributed to a well-balanced navy that's strong on all fronts. India has over 250 naval units, 11 of which are destroyers. This class plays a pivotal role in guarding India's coasts and protecting them from enemy ships. There are many high-end destroyers in India's armada, including INS Visakhapatnam. It's the latest addition to its fleet and represents the pinnacle of the nation's shipbuilding. In fact, it's one of the most advanced warships not just in India but anywhere in the world, with a length of 538 feet weighing in at 7,400 tons. It reigns supreme in the Indian Ocean. It's also powered by gas propulsion that features four cutting-edge gas turbines that can propel the warship at about 30 knots or 35 miles per hour. The weaponry of India's destroyers is just as impressive as the rest of the fleet. They're fitted with a wide variety of weapons that include mid-range, surface-to-air missiles, surface-to-surface -surface missiles, torpedo launchers, anti-submarine rocket launchers, and rapid gun mounts, all of which allow India to obliterate a wide range of naval threats. Mighty destroyers aren't the only strength of India's armada. The nation can also deploy more than 10 frigates, 20 corvettes, and 15 submarines to improve its fighting chances. But the undisputed ruler of India's fleet is INS Vikramaditya, a Kiev-class aircraft carrier that struck fear into the hearts of enemies since 2013 when it first entered service. Whether India engages its opponent or has to defend itself, this aircraft carrier can be an ace up its sleeve. It has many destructive missiles, such as surface-to-air projectiles and a variety of high-caliber machine guns. What's also admirable about the vessel is that it can carry up to 36 planes, including 26 Mikoyan multi-role fighters and 10 Kamov helicopters. The impressive armament means that India can not only engage threats but also neutralize attacking enemy troops before they reach their intended targets. And it can do so from pretty much any position. The INS Vikramaditya has powerful engines capable of outputting 180,000 shp or shaft horsepower, enabling the vessel to reach high speeds and support the rest of India's military from different locations. Now you're probably thinking, well-trained soldiers, robust tanks, destructive fighter jets, and a powerful navy are all nice-to-haves, but India is a nuclear force, isn't it? Absolutely. Although India hasn't officially released the size of its nuclear arsenal, some estimates suggest the country has more than 160 warheads at its disposal. These are by far the most powerful weapon in India's military, but we're covering them last since India is unlikely to use them in the potential conflict against China. If either side launched a nuclear warhead, 
it would probably cause a chain reaction that could plunge the world into World War III, which would end badly for both nations. This wraps up India's military strength. Let's now turn our attention to its rival, China. Although China is known for its technological investments, military spending comprises a large part of its GDP. More specifically, the nation allocated nearly 2% of its GDP to military, giving it a budget of almost $300 billion, which is almost five times more than India. In today's world, the country with the highest defense budget has a stronger military 99% of the time. That seems to be the case when it comes to today's belligerence. But let's analyze China's forces segment by segment to determine if it's true. In terms of manpower, it is no contest. Even though India has surpassed China as the most populated country on the planet, it still has fewer soldiers than China, with over 2 million active soldiers and an additional 2 million reserve personnel China trumps India by a wide margin in this category. The nation can also source more troops if need be. Given that the number of citizens available for conscription is just over 385 million, about 65 million more than what India can work with. Training-wise, China seems to do a good job of preparing its soldiers for an array of combat conditions and environments. The Chinese People's Liberation Army, or PLA, regularly undergoes rigorous training, and its members are renowned for their high discipline. But does discipline translate into combat readiness? It's hard to get a clear picture of how well-trained the Chinese military really is. For one, the communist government rarely discloses details about its army, clouding everyone's perception of its military strength. Some sources say Chinese soldiers are fully-fledged war machines, while others are skeptical of their battle readiness. It seems there's more merit to the latter viewpoint. The reason is simple. The PLA hasn't been in a major battle for over four decades since it clashed with Vietnam in the Sino-Vietnamese War. Even though both sides claimed victory, it's hard to say who prevailed. One thing was certain, the PLA's invasion was far from successful. Vietnam retained its dominion over Cambodia for an additional 10 years and decimated China's military, killing over 30,000 soldiers. The ghost of this conflict still looms over the PLA, and the lack of first-hand combat experience is undeniable. Only a handful of war veterans are still in service, so it's no wonder why many doubt that Chinese soldiers are ready for an all-out war. Even China's official newspaper, People's Liberation Army Daily, is worried about the issue. Conveniently named Peace Disease, Years of peace have resulted in unprecedented economic growth, but have also undermined military readiness. Even though China had a minor skirmish with its current regional rival in 1988, it's not enough to prepare its infantry for the potential high-altitude battles that it might have to engage in against Indian troops. As a result, if some of the fighting between China and India hinges on infantry only, India's experience with harsh environments and relatively recent combat experience would likely pave its way to victory. But as we all know, modern warfare isn't just about soldiers. Sometimes it's all about the machinery. Equipment plays an important role, and China seems to be head and shoulders above India in this respect. The first area where China outperforms India is in the number of tanks. The nation has about 5,750 tanks, which is approximately 1,000 more than the other side. And the technology of their main battle tanks is high level. This is most evident when you take a look at the Chinese Type 99. Featuring reinforced armor, it can withstand the impact of 120mm projectiles with ease. Some even claim that the front of the tank provides as much protection as 1,000mm of steel armor. The vehicle also has NBC protection and modular reactive armor that can be replaced quickly after it's damaged. Chinese tanks aren't just durable when facing direct impact, though. They're equipped with technology that can keep strikes from happening in the first place. For instance, the Type 99 features a laser protection network that utilizes advanced lasers to disrupt incoming missiles. If the enemy deploys gunners with bazookas or observation optics, the tank can use infrared guidance signals to stop the opponent in their tracks. The protection system is also effective against helicopters. To support its tank dominance, China can draw from its stockpile of more than 14,000 infantry combat vehicles, a fleet that's nearly twice the size of India's. There are many highlights of China's infantry battle vehicles, but the ZBD-08 might be the most impressive specimen yet. The Chinese drew inspiration for this vehicle from the Russian BMP-3, and although the Chinese version resembles the BMP-3, it is far more advanced. The unit has a redefined layout that addresses many drawbacks of the Russian version, eliminating the cramped exits and tightly packed troop compartments. It does so by putting the engine in the front and the crew cabins in the back, giving soldiers more room to operate the vehicle. Protection's also been elevated. 
The ZBD-08 has a steel hull and is compatible with modular armor that can add even more protection. Some suggest that the front arc can endure 30mm armor-piercing projectiles, while the sides neutralize 14.5mm rounds with ease. Like Chinese tanks, this vehicle employs laser protection systems to deter enemy missiles. When it comes to armament, the ZBD-08 and the rest of the Chinese infantry combat vehicles are just as reliable, if not more reliable than Indian vehicles. China often installs 100mm guns on these vehicles and autoloaders that can zero in on targets from up to 2.5 miles away. The vehicle's weaponry is highly versatile, as it can fire anti-tank and ordinary projectiles to neutralize India's main battle tanks. Given the larger number of tanks and vehicles, it's easy to see why China's equipment more than makes up for its lack of recent experience. The difference between the PLA and India is even more evident when you consider China's Air Force, which consists of about 2,000 more aircraft than India's squadron. Among the aircraft is the high-tech Chengdu J-20 fighter jet. The stealth war machine features supersonic inlet intakes and state-of-the-art low observable exhaust to maximize performance. The central weapon bay houses long-range air-to-air and precision-guided missiles. There are two additional weapons hubs behind the inlets primarily designed for short-range aerial combat. These secondary bays allow the pilot to close the bay door before releasing a missile to enhance stealth and catch the enemy off guard. The PLA is also famous for its world-class helicopters like the Z-10, developed for high-octane air-to-air combat and anti-armor assaults. The helicopter has all it takes to decimate enemies in areas inaccessible to the J-20 and other fighter jets. It comes with a 30mm cannon as well as an HJ-9 anti-tank and TY-90 air-to-air missile to vanquish different types of threats. The Z-10 can even hold rocket pods and boasts armor plates while the sloped sides reduce radar detection. With China's ground and aerial supremacy established, it's time to assess the PLA's naval capabilities. Does India at least stand a chance in this area? Probably not, considering the size of the Chinese armada. The country has nearly 750 naval units, dwarfing the 250 Indian vessels. The fact that China would emerge victorious in naval combat is even more obvious when you take the technology of the PLA's fleet into account. For example, the Type 55 destroyer is a mighty warship that can annihilate pretty much anything in its path stealthily. The enclosed forecastle conceals its anchor chains, mooring points, and other sections that would otherwise alert enemy radars and ships. It's even equipped with advanced smokestack designs that further eliminates the risk of detection and infrared signature. Regarding weapons, it hardly gets any better than Chinese destroyers. With 112 launching cells, the PLA's fleet can fire virtually any type of missiles, including HHQ-9 surface-to-air, YJ-18 anti-ship, CJ-10 land attack, and anti-submarine projectiles. To double down on its naval strength, the PLA can deploy three more aircraft carriers than India, with the highlight being the Fujian. It's the largest of all Chinese carriers and even rivals the USS Ford nuclear-powered vessel. It features electromagnetic catapults to launch heavier aircraft faster, eight oil-fired boilers, and steam turbines that generate a whopping 220,000 horsepower for quick transportation. In the nuclear department, it's estimated China has over 400 nuclear warheads, compared to India's estimated 160. Should the potential war escalate drastically, China would handily overwhelm India. That brings us back to the central question, whose military is more powerful? Without any doubt, China's military is superior to India's and by a large margin. The only area where India may outperform China is soldier training. Everything else, including tanks, infantry combat vehicles, aircraft, naval forces, and nuclear weapons, favors China. Now check out each country's plan if the war escalated with China's World War III plan or India's World War III plan.